being laughed at, being emasculated, essentially means his genes die out because no one wants to mate with him. So essentially that feels like death to a man. There are six things we as men really need from you. Really, these aren't even wants, these are needs. We need these from you ladies. That's what I'm gonna be sharing in this video. Don't forget as well, you can grab a copy of my book. The audio book is now available. And I'm gonna share with you these six needs that we have from you. Please give them to us in this video. Now, before I begin these, don't get me wrong. I know that there's lots that you need from us as well. And I'm not in one way saying your needs are not important in this video. These are the things though that mean a lot to us when you give them to us. Number one, your pride. Ladies, we know, we know as guys when you're proud of us and we feel big versus when you're not proud of us and we feel so, so little. You've got to ask yourself, am I proud of my guy? Am I proud of who he is? Do I want to introduce him to people? Am I proud of what he stands for? Am I proud of his values? Am I proud of what he's doing? Now, if there's been an incident that has led you to not be proud of us, for example, if we've cheated on you or if we've betrayed your trust in some other way, that's a bit of an exception. But excluding those incidences, really ask yourself, are you proud of us? Because we can sense it if you're not. And if you're not, and if you're not even proud of the work we're putting in, so you may not be proud of what we've built yet, but if you're not at least proud of the work we're putting in, then you've got to really ask yourself, are you the right woman for us? Because wouldn't you be better off letting us go towards a woman who can be proud of us for who we are if you're not feeling that way? Your pride really does mean the world to us. It's so, so important to us feeling masculine, to us feeling like men. We want you to be proud of us and we know when you're not. As I say, if we've done something to cause directly you to not be proud of us and we've got to kind of work our way to recover from that, that's one thing. If nothing like that has happened and you can't feel proud of us, who we are, then to be completely frank, you're better off being with a man you can be proud of, and we're better off being with a woman who can be proud of us. Number two is your belief. We need your belief in us. We need your belief in who we are, what we do. And this is a little bit related to pride, but particularly when it comes to our purpose, if you don't believe in us, if you don't believe in what we're capable of, it really feels like a lack of trust. And I talked about trust in a couple of other videos, but your trust in us and your belief in us, again, it makes us feel like men, it makes us feel like we can step up, and it actually relates to a coaching principle that I use a lot with my one-on-one -on -one clients, which is I, as the coach, need to see them as their very best, most high potential self. In other words, the woman that comes to me as a client, I need to see all of her potential. Because if I think her potential is a six, then how can I coach her to be an eight or a 10 or a 12? Even if she comes to me and her fears are like a 10 out of 10, that's belief. And that's why it's so important. A man can only ever grow to the belief that you have in him. Most importantly, if you can't be with a man you believe in and whose purpose you believe in, you're better off being with a different guy. Number three need we have from you is emotional safety. Okay, we need you to be able to name emotions. We need you to be able to spot emotions. We need you to be able to accept emotions. We as men do not fear physical safety. We don't care about that. We fear emotional safety or lack thereof. We fear being judged for our emotions. We fear being emasculated. We fear being vulnerable. There's a saying, women fear physical death and men fear being laughed at. Now, personally, I think that saying's a little bit biased. I would change it to women fear physical death and men fear genetic death. And what I mean by that is, we need you to make us feel emotionally safe by being skillful with emotions. And for a lot of the clients I work with, for example, professional women who have to be in a very masculine energy most of their day, this can be a challenge for them. And it makes them frustrated because they're very highly successful, but they don't make men feel safe and they see men choosing women who are quote unquote less successful than they are. What those women are more successful at though is making men feel emotionally safe. You understanding that your ability to manage emotions and your ability to name them and be an emotional vessel, not judge them, a man's listening to you for that. A man will never go outside of your emotional range. In other words, if you're this good with emotions, he will go up to there. If you're this good with emotions, he'll go up to there. As soon as a man goes beyond your emotional range, he becomes the woman and he risks being 
made fun of, being vulnerable, and ultimately being emasculated. So for a man, we need you to be able to hold a safe space for emotions. We are looking to you, and this is why the work has to start with you. When you're able to name your own emotions, spot them, and accept them, all without judgment, you're gonna be able to do the same for us. If you can't do that for yourself, then there's no way that we're gonna feel emotionally safe with you. Number four is your appreciation. Your appreciation of us. This kind of goes without saying, but how much do we all need appreciation? Yes, we as men, we really, 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 really need it too. This is why it's so important to have no expectations. Now you're all gonna hate this. You're gonna say, wait a minute, if I don't have any expectations, I'm gonna get nothing. Hold on one second there. You've gotta have no expectations. Think about it. If I have an expectation of you to make me dinner, then how appreciative am I gonna be when you make me dinner? I'm like, that should happen. I don't need to appreciate you for it. That's my expectation. Whereas if I have no expectations for you to make me dinner, then I'm gonna appreciate it every time you do it. I'm gonna be so appreciative of you making me dinner. So you need to let go of your expectations. Now I know what you're thinking. You're thinking something very reasonable, which is if I let go of my expectations, I let go of what I deserve. I need to have expectations from men. No, you need to have standards. You see, women with high expectations struggle to give appreciation. And women with no expectations and no standards don't get any respect. High standards, low expectations. You see, standards are about you and what you will and won't accept, but they're not about making assumptions. When you have high standards, you're willing to walk away from men who, for example, aren't trustworthy or don't treat you well, so you still get the respect, but because you have low expectations, you can still give the appreciation when they step up to that. Standards and expectations, very important you get this. If you have high expectations and high standards, you won't be appreciative, and a man, again, won't feel safe with you because your expectations are so, so high all the time that he's always feeling like he's gonna risk failing and suffering the wrath of not meeting your expectations. Whereas if you have no expectations and no standards, you'll just never get anything in your life. You don't wanna be there either. You certainly won't get any respect. That's why high standards, very important and good boundaries around those, but standards are to do with you. They're not expecting anything of anyone else. And that's why you can lower your expectations and have a ton of appreciation when those standards are met. Number five, we need your patience. We need you to go slow with us. And this particularly applies to difficult conversations. In the rest of life, it's fine. But when it comes to difficult conversations like compatibility conversations, for example, if you guys are talking about having kids or how many kids in the future, future living location, future religion, future spirituality or work-life balance, or if it's something relationship-based. Maybe you wanna give him feedback that there hasn't been enough present or quality time, or maybe you wanna let him know that something he's been doing has hurt you. In those situations, and with those conversations, you really wanna go slow. There's a saying, a man will say the most valuable thing 30 seconds after you think he's finished speaking. I've done a few demo videos on this, but in any of these important conversations, ladies, go very slowly. Lots and lots of pausing. Zip it, zip it for a while. Say your thing and then let him speak and then let him speak more. It's important to allow lots of time and even days, you know, revisit the conversation tomorrow or the next day. One thing my own partner does, for example, is if there's something really difficult, she'll give me a week and that way I can talk to my coach and come back to her. Now, it doesn't mean giving him indefinite time and he can't just sandbag difficult topics months and months into the future. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm just saying that still hold him to a standard and make sure he gets back to you, but give him time and space to process and he'll be a lot more forthcoming with his thoughts and feelings. And number six is we need your feedback and your boundaries. Now this will piss us off at times and we will tell you we don't want this, but you have to understand you as a woman, your feedback and boundaries makes us better men. So let me give you an example. Let's say you're 33 and you wanna start a family soon and you've been dating a guy for six months. And then for the second time, you find him on the apps, on dating apps. Now that's really sketchy behavior, right? If you let him get away with that, and if you continue to date him, you're basically green lighting the behavior. You're giving him your time, 
you're not giving him the consequences of his actions and you're letting him just follow his impulses without any subsequent consequences. That's not training him to be a better man. That's actually enabling him and denying him those healthy consequences that would improve him and would give him more responsibility over his impulsiveness. Think about it. If you and every other woman he does that to leaves him, then eventually the pain of loneliness will build up and he'll become a better man. He'll actually look back and thank you and those other women for leaving him so that he could learn to handle his impulses. Your boundaries grow us. We may not like them, we may put up a big fight, and if we're particularly insecure, we, you know, some men will even gaslight you or come after you for calling us out, but it does make us better men. If every woman in the world did this, every man would have to step up. Your boundaries really do empower us. And when it comes to giving feedback, a little tip, make sure you give your feedback in the form of feelings. And by the way, I feel like you don't care. I feel like you don't, we don't spend enough time together. I feel like I'm not a priority. None of those are feelings. I'm not a priority is not on an emotional wheel. You want to always use feelings, sadness, happiness. I feel unsettled. I feel uncertain. I feel scared. Whatever the feeling is, Use feelings because those other things I described are thoughts and thoughts can always be debated. We men, we love thoughts. I feel like I'm not a priority. Great. Now we're in a debate about whether or not you're a priority. I feel like we don't spend enough time together. Great. Now we can do a logical debate about the amount of time we spend together. That's not what you want. That's our specialty as men. You don't want to get into a logical debate about this. Your feelings cannot be debated. We can't debate the fact that you feel sad. So when you're setting boundaries and giving us feedback, always use feelings. Otherwise you're gonna end up in a pointless debate and you're not gonna feel listened to because the guy's gonna take it off the topic. You can see how important all six of these things are to us and by doing them you make us feel like men, you get to feel like the woman and we all get to have better relationships. Leave a comment, give the video a thumbs up, hit the big red subscribe button with the bell, and I'll see you in the next video very soon.